Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This video is an overview of these basic electrical concepts and I'm going to present them in almost the same order. I'm going to give definitions of all of these and examples as listed here. The background for all of these definitions will be DC electricity, battery powered electricity. And I'm going to link these basic electrical concepts together but link them to mechanics, a branch of physics that is known as mechanics. Throughout this overview I'm going to use physical object because I'm linking it to mechanics, physical object to be a model for all of these concepts and tie them together. I'm going to use a kid's toy, magnetics, and this piece of 2x4 here in which I cut two channels with or two trenches with a table saw in a few minutes. So, as any model, as any physical model, it has its limitations and it's going to be an inexact parallel at cases, but bear with me, this model will make sense for all of these concepts here. So let's get started with the first one, current flow. Now, this one, of course, as a kid's toy, is two pieces of magnet in a plastic straw. But think of it as an electron, just a single piece of an electron, okay? Of course, in real life this has millions or trillions of atoms and electrons, but just think of it as one piece of electron. Now each electron has one charge, negative one. So each electron is negatively charged. So this one is negatively charged, this one is negatively charged, this one is negatively charged. All of these electrons are negatively charged. Now, like charges, repel each other. Now kids use these magnets in a way that they stick them together like so and they can build something out of it. I'm going to use them backwards this way so that these repel each other like that. Okay, So this one is repelling this one and this one is repelling the next one or they repel each other and then the next one of course and the next one. So how this illustrates current flow is that if this trench here that I cut in the wood represents a single piece of wire, like so. Electrons in this wire or this conductor move ahead in either directions without touching each other. So it's a non-contact force or the magnetic field around an electron is an action at a distance force. Okay, It's a non-contact force and electrons move along like so. Now, you can see that there is a little bit of squish before they start moving. They can get closer and then they and then they jump ahead. Uh, yeah, so it's an inexact model of real life. Yes, magnetic fields even between electrons or among electrons, they do have a little bit of give. So in that sense it is modeling it accurately but this little bit of give, this little bit of bounce has no bearing on how electricity is conducted and it's, a, it's an interesting detail but all, that's all there is to it. So electrons move in a conductor like so, they are pushing each other. Okay, so electrons are pushy. Now, the uh, two things I want to point out, the speed of this is as follows. The say if this one is the first electron and this one is the last electron here and this one is at a switch. If a flip if a switch is flicked here, this electron does not need to travel all the way here to go through the filament of a light bulb to produce light. This electron just needs to move ahead a little bit, say about I don't know, half an inch, about a centimeter or so, to make this last electron move, just like so. Okay, so if we start, I don't know, somewhere here, move ahead, I don't know, a centimeter or something, and this electron already moves, so this electron does not need to travel all the way here to produce light, or if it's a baseboard heater, heat, or if it's a buzzer, a, a sound. Okay, so you get the idea. Electrons mm, or electricity does have a theoretical maximum speed, the speed of light minus losses in a conductor. More about it later when we talk about resistance. But 
besides that the electron as a particle of matter the electron does not have to go from the switch all the way to the light bulb to to uh, produce a result okay so that's the input and that's the output so the electron does not need to travel all the way in the wire to make a change or to make a difference so the same applies to these three so these ones here travel much the same way the electrons are pushing each other and there and they can go through the track the trench that I cut in the wood the next concept is Coulomb now in the previous example I asked you to think of this magnet as a single electron uh, electrons are not counted one at a time because that takes forever because you need trillions and trillions of electrons so they count electrons in one unit but think of it as this is a shipping containers worth of electrons or a railway car worth of electrons or a truckload worth of electrons say if this is a 20 foot equivalent shipping container this could be thought of as one coulomb worth of electrons uh, monsieur coulomb is a french uh, uh, scientist and this idea was named after him a coulomb worth of electrons is a large number 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 that means that one is followed by 18 zeros and in a million there are six zeros so that's 10 to the power of six oh, that's a million and then three more zeros you can make it to billions and trillions etc by adding zeros but uh, you can keep adding zeros but you kind of run out of names for numbers so this one is just named one coulomb worth of electrons so one coulomb one coulomb one coulomb each of them is a coulomb of electrons so that's what the concept of coulombs is and it's especially useful to explain amperage now andre marie ampere was another french person and uh, he, due to his contributions this the following phenomenon was named after him so these electrons are traveling in this conductor here this is the skinnier conductor here the skinny one here and this one here where the electrons are in triple sets could be thought of as a large conductor here is this piece of garbage which is cut off this one is copper this one is aluminum it doesn't matter which one it's a large diameter conductor so the trench doesn't have a diameter the trench has a width so this is an in inexact parallel so don't push it too far but it still makes sense at some level so this is a wire diameter or wire size here so large wire skinny wire okay now these coulombs of electrons are traveling in this skinny wire at this point and very simply one ampere is equivalent to one coulomb of electron passing through say a finish line if I make a finish line here as in a race passing through this finish line or any point of reference one coulomb a second passing through that's one ampere of electrical load Okay, you can work the other way, of course. So that's one second, one coulomb, one second, one coulomb, one second, one coulomb. Of course, uh, five coulombs in five seconds, ten coulombs in ten seconds, it's the same thing. It is one ampere. And of course, the same parallel works with a larger conductor size here. So through any given reference point, if more electrons, more coulombs of electrons go through, say three coulombs a second, that's three amps through and through. Okay. So there. Uh, way too. And of course, I'm working with DC electricity, so in DC electricity, current is one directional. So, there, three coulombs, three coulombs, three coulombs each second, so that's three amps of load, three amperes. So, that's one way to illustrate here electrical load relating to coulombs and current flow. Now, I'm going to skip voltage for a little bit and talk about wire gauge, also known as wire size. I just want to mention again that uh, this first trench here or track here represents a single wire and this one, a larger one, ignore the width of trench versus diameter of wire inexactness. So, through a larger wire, 
more coulombs of electrons can physically fit because electrons are made of matter they do have a size so larger conductor will fit more electrons so uh, the wire gauge or wire size is related to amperage this way through a larger wire more load can be put through more amps okay large wire lots of amps skinny wire fewer amps okay or little wire little amps big wire big amps so there that's the short story here with wire gauge i want to jump to electrical resistance quickly and i'm going to go back to voltage in a sec so electrical resistance is very simply envisioned here there is friction here in this physical model the magnets are kind of not moving perfectly smoothly there is drag in the system there's friction at the side walls here and this was cut coarsely with just a table saw in a matter of minutes so there you can see they're kind of jerky as they move ahead and then this happens a lot and yeah same in this trench so friction physical friction because electrons are made of matter and they go through magnetic fields there is friction uh, through uh, the uh, conductor it doesn't matter how well a conductor conducts so friction is just unavoidable this friction is electrical resistance now let's go back to voltage and I want to put the magnets in here properly so they are repelling each other yeah that looks good okay so for voltage I want to refer to mechanics a little bit electrical energy is or can be compared to mechanical energy mechanical energy has two forms potential energy and I maybe want to use this computer mouse here for a sec so potential energy and kinetic energy objects at rest have potential energy much like a student student X has a lot of potential if the student doesn't do too much in class so what can be learned about the student if the student is not really participating in class or not doing quizzes or tests we don't know how student X is doing but probably student has a lot of potential so that's all uh, can be known so this mouse here has a lot of potential it's not doing anything useful here just sitting still there it could be at a lower height has less potential energy than at on top of this 2x4 and the reason why this potent difference in potential energy is significant is that from this height if this mass falls it can squish a mouse or uh, an ant or an insect whatever a fruit fly and while it's in free fall it has kinetic energy so this higher potential energy of the mouse can be transformed temporarily to kinetic energy for the duration of its drop and then again its potential energy and in this case the tabletop that's where it reached its lowest potential energy of course it can be taken downstairs or down to the floor or whatever to have a, an even lower state of potential energy now how does this relate to electrical energy because electricity does not have a height excellent excellent question I'm glad you brought it up however batteries are made of metals there is a difference an electric potential difference between metals say this one is copper this one is aluminum and nobody makes a battery this is just pieces of wire cut off nobody makes a battery out of uh, copper and aluminum but out of out of lithium and zinc and lead and whatever other metals they do make batteries because they're just found to be more efficient that way so the electric potential between two dissimilar metals is such that we when these are in a battery immersed either in a wet paste or in a battery acid bath when these metals are placed there is a potential difference between them in terms of how willing these are to shed electrons to be part of the circuit that potential is what electrical potential but it can be likened to mechanical potential so in the definition of voltage this electric potential is featured 
and very simply I'm just going to lift up this little bit of 2x4 here to illustrate the maybe put a pen underneath somewhere there to illustrate the point that if I raise a physical object from a lower height to a greater height its potential energy is increased now if you lift a piece of wire up with electrons in it, its potential energy isn't increased but potential energy is present in a line from the start of a line to the end of the line as it is as there is a wire, there is a circuit between the one side of a battery marked with a plus and the other side of the battery sometimes marked with a minus, not on this one so this electric potential can be thought of as a height. Yes, batteries have a height, but it's not that height. It's a chemical height, okay? Between two dissimilar metals, say copper and aluminum or lead and whatever they put in batteries, that's not important. So that's why I just lift up the end of this 2x4 and now we have a simulated electrical potential difference. Now, due to this potential difference, electrons will start to move. Now imagine that these electrons are round and they can roll like so, and because they are round they can they can roll down this track. They are not bearing balls, but they could roll down the track. So if I raise this one up, these would start to flow. Okay, when there is a potential difference between two dissimilar metals, there will be electron flow. However meager it is, there will be. Okay, and it's always downhill from from um, one metal towards another metal in a battery that's down here. Okay, and there will be electron flow like so. Same with a larger wire, same story. There will be electron flow. So this height here is voltage electric potential okay this voltage can be little one and a half volts this can be more i don't know 120 volts this can be 600 volts and you can kind of see what happens this is what i wanted to do these magnets eventually start to push each other out and run down the track and just clear this two by four entirely so large voltage results in faster moving electrons so voltage will provide a jolt to a human body but it's re it relates to the speed of current okay so lastly I want to point out that the concept of amperage it's all of course sticking together so the concept of amperage how many coulombs go through in how much time is a concept that's absolutely independent of the potential difference the electric potential difference between uh, two ends of the circuit, the positive and negative ends of the circuit. So these are completely two independent things. This can be one and a half volt, 600 volts, and it's 600 volts, this can still be slowly trickling, or if it's a, if it's a skinny wire, or it can be or it can be a large wire and then it's not so slowly trickling. Okay, so the speed of current can be thought of as voltage and how much how many coulombs of electrons go through that diameter of wire like so has to do with amperage okay so that's how this model works it's it's inexact but it's it works you know, at, uh, at some level to tie all of these concepts together and and relate to mechanics thank you very much for watching